everybody, and we're just about to start. We'll wait maybe another minute, but I'm going to get started on the introductions. My name is Sue, and I'm going to be doing the class. We also have Don. He is manning all the questions and any issues that may came up, come up. So if you have a question or any comment or if you completely missed what I've just said, you can send, put your hand up or send a text to Don and he will be able to answer you now if it's something that I'm working on and nobody got it, I am happy to repeat it. So there's a lot of options to get your questions answered and if, seriously, if you don't, we'll leave like um, I think 10 or 15 minutes at the end of class for questions. Everybody loves that. So you can feel free to type up and I'll go through and answer them. Okay, so this is a beginner's class to Ember, to learning Ember. And we get this question a lot on YouTube and on the websites and on Facebook. Where do I start? People get a little overwhelmed with Ember because it's a little bit confusing until you understand how each module works. There's three modules to it. And people find that uh, confusing. When I first started with Ember, I think it was like 12 years ago, I was like, what the heck? I don't understand why there's three things. And if you think about it a certain way, it makes sense. And this will be an awe moment for a lot of people. And then you'll know exactly where you need to be to do what you want to do. Now, there's three parts. There's manager, editor, and studio. So think of it this way. Manager is where you manage your files. They make it really easy to locate files, to convert files, to change files. And we're going to briefly go over manager. Editor, which is what I'm in now, um, and it says it right up that if you get lost and don't know where you are, way up at the top left it says Ember Editor. So editor is for editing your files. And there's quite a bit you can do in editor. And the third module is my favorite, and it's Studio. And think of it as your embroidery studio. And that's where you do all of your creating. That's where you do your actual digitizing, and you're coming up with your own things. And that's what digitizing is in Studio. So manager for managing your files, editor for editing them, and Studio is your embroidery studio for creating them. So when you open you, uh, we tend not to use Manager a whole lot, but then again, we've created thousands upon thousands of embroidery designs, and we just do it a different way. There's a lot of things you can do. There's a list. We're on the server right now. Uh, over to the right, there's a list of all your files, and you can easily see them, and you can right-click, and you can preview files. You can print files, and there's a whole bunch of options for printing different temp templates, which is really handy if you want to you know, look at placement. You can export. So you can export an image, and it'll save it nicely for you. An animated image, so it makes a GIF for you, a GIF of um, the, stitches, the file stitching out, which is really cool if you want to post it on a website or something like that. Different icons, different documentation with different levels of what you want, thumbnails. So basically there's, there's a lot you can do there, even just under the export. Input-output operations is a great way to send stuff to your embroidery machine, and they have quite a few listed here. Um, Baradin is a commercial embroidery machine, and I use that one a lot. So different ones, they just make it easier to do that. So again, it's managing your files. And it's a really easy way of doing it. You can convert a whole bunch of files. You can convert the files and zip them into a um, zip them into a package, and that makes it nice. You can add your own watermark. That's really cool. You can check out your clipboard, do different things with your clipboard. You can delete files. So it's really a simple way of managing stuff. Up here on the top to the right, you can map different drives to make things faster when you're in editor and when you're in studio. And that's very handy. We have quite a few drives mapped, which is nice. Um, middle panel, I, I actually, I'm going to whip through manager because we're, we're working more on the digitizing part. I do have 
um, a manager video where I take a whole hour and explain manager, and same with editor. So we're just going to briefly touch on them so you have a feeling of what you should be doing here. So this is kind of the, the tree is the, the file tree. That's easy. Right panel. There's options. <coughs> Excuse me. I suggest you go through the options if you want it in... Um, if you want the whole thing in millimeters or inches. These are just the things that will make it a lot easier for you to figure out. And it's um, kind of awesome. It's all in one spot. It's kind of neat. Um, when you're printing out, you can put your logo and address in there. Just little things like that. We tend not to use them, but they're there if you want to use them. And they make it a lot easier. Now, of course, your icons, everything in your drop-down menu is basically on your icons, your main ones. You can mess around with your fonts. You can add new fonts. You can tell them where to search. You can add in your um, registration numbers. That's a nice, tidy place to do it. So that is basically what... Um, it's basically what you use uh, manager for. Manager files, neat and tidy. So let's go into editor. Take a second to flip out there, and I pulled up that file. Didn't mean to. There we go. Editor. Quite a few things you can do in editor. It's not digitizing per se, but you kind of are because you can pull up a PES file or a DST or an HUS file, and you can add some simple lettering. So let's let's try some. I was playing around with it before class started. But here over here is your lettering. Now these are the embered embroidery fonts, which I would highly suggest that you have one or two. You don't have to have them all. We most certainly don't have them all. This one here is your font engine. And um, it's really good. You have to be a little careful with it. What it means is that you can use any true type font and it'll auto convert it to embroidery. Sounds great. 90% of the time it works great. You just have to be careful with it because not all TTF, true type fonts, are suitable for embroidery. If it's really elaborate, you have to make it quite large. They will not go small or even medium. So you just have to be careful of that and you just have to check everything out. Now we use Editor daily. We use it all the time and we use it for quite a few reasons. And I'm going to show you the basics of it today and what you can do. So let's just insert some um, quick text. So Embered Rocks, something like that. And I'm going to show you what you can do with the text. Now I didn't mess around with the font or anything. I just left it at a plain one. Now you can move things around. So say if you had a PES design here, you could add Merry Christmas, or you can add a name. You can save it all in one, and then you can send it to your machine. You can save it as PES from here, because that is um, a machine um, extension. So what can you do here? If you put in the lettering and you want it a different size, you can make it bigger. The key is you can only do it once. So if I bring it back down again, it says objects have always been already been processed which, uh, okay, what is it saying? I'm not going to read it all. You guys can read. It, what it's saying is if you do it more than once, you're going to introduce errors. And I'm going to point that out to you. And it's not just with text. It's with anything that you do. You can't make it already. You can see even before I do it. Yes, I know there's errors. Did you see the errors in the M? Did you see right here in the B? Let me zoom in here. And that's what happens when you make things, when you adjust the size, I think you can safely go up or down from the, the original PES size 10 or 15 percent and you won't get any errors. Uh, only once though, and if you make it, say you make it too big and you see errors, um, what you do is you, right, you click on edit and you go undo and it brings it back. But you can see after the first time there's still errors in there. So that's why it's editor. You can only edit, and you can only edit a little bit. And you can see that that wouldn't look very nice stitching out because the spacing's all wrong and everything like that. But we can go back. I think it goes back 20 or 25 steps, something like that. And have we got it yet? No, I guess I did a lot with it, sorry. So that's one of the main rules of editor is that you it, it's just for 
minor editing and you can't make a whole lot of changes. And that goes for text and it goes for designs that you bring in. You can do quite a few things, but you really can't change it and resize a whole lot. And you can't do it more than once because a lot of people make that mistake and they make a whole bunch of changes and it won't stitch out. The other thing, if you have, you can see what I showed you on the lettering. Same goes for like a design. So if you have a pretty design in here and you make it quite a bit bigger, it's going to adjust the density, but not completely, not very well. And it's going to, um, if you make it too small, it's going to make your stitch out a hockey puck and you might uh, break your machine. So you don't want to be doing that. A little bit, yes. A lot, no. Let's quickly go over some of the tools here because it's very functional and I'm just going to use the text as a good example of things that you can do. And there's pull down menus and then there's icons at the side and there's also keyboard shortcuts. And I just like to tell everybody that um, I have a keyboard. <laughs> I'm just a mouse driven person. So often, most of the time, I forget to tell you the keyboard shortcuts because I'm, I'm much faster on the mouse and I've been doing it the same way for 10 years. I'm always up for change and learning new things, but I am a creature habit. So I always tell people whatever works best for you. If some of the shortcuts are easier for you to remember on the keyboard and you just get in that habit, great. If you want to right click and mouse everything, great. If you want to take five steps instead of two to get the same job done, that's fine. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let people say, oh, that's wrong. That's not how you do it. That's your way of doing it. And as long as you get the proper end result, that's fine. So what I want everyone to do is right now relax, okay? You can't make too many mistakes in Ember. There's, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. All that matters is what kind of a stitch out you get. So just, if people are giving you advice on how to do it, try it if you like it and you get a better result than what you're doing, great, do that. So, okay, here we are working on the lettering. Now, of course, you can um, go into points editing mode. It's a little bit difficult, of course, with um, lettering because there's a lot of points, we know that. And you highlight. So let me do that again. Let's go back to our point. Points editing mode is here, and it's also up here. You can switch to mode, but we're going to work down the side just a little bit. And what you do, and this would be a lot easier if it wasn't lettering, but you just uh, left click and pull out, and then these are all the points. So it's once you zoom in, you can see what I'm talking about. If you want to edit a point, if you want to you know, say this one, it's not the greatest example, you can edit the little squares are the nodes and you can edit it. So then that's how it is. I just edited a point. That looks great. Um, this one we use a lot. The freehand select mode, I find it one of the handiest tools ever. So say you wanted to make just a quick adjustment because remember we can't do a whole lot. If you want to make a quick adjustment, you can't do anything. This is one piece. And when you bring in an embroidery design, it's also going to be in one piece. But what if I wanted to move the D? How can I do that? Well, it's right here, freehand select mode. Again, we use it all the time. And I'm left clicking, and I'm putting out points. And there you go. And then you double click, and the whole thing will change. And then you have to go up here. A lot of people miss that, because if I were to click off, it starts again. And you go, wow, OK, that didn't do any good. So click around your object. You don't even have to be close. Double click, and then you go up here to split. And look what it does. It splits the D from the group. So now I can move the D around. And I think that's really handy for a lot of designs if you want to make a quick adjustment. If you want to say there's a flower, and it's, you know, it's all one embroidery design, and you want to move it over a little bit, how do you do that? How do you do that? That's how you do it. If you can make a clear cut of it, now mind you, there is a little flaw here, and we've added a little jump stitch, um, depending on how this was done, would stitch out or it would be just a jump. But you see right here on the red, that's a little flaw. But no big deal if you want to move your D around. There you go. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but anyway, say you did. 
um, move a flower, move something, just bear in mind where you cut it, there's going to be the connectors left. Um, you could cut them out too, but it's probably not worth it for a little tiny stitch like that. So I think that's awesome, and you can make quite a few edits just with those things. Um, and I think it's very handy, and I think it's neat. If you wanted to, say, leave the D there and you just wanted the color change, double click on it, change the color. But you have to separate it to be able to do that. See how you can do that? So if you wanted every other color, someone else digitized this or, you know, you put the lettering down and you want it changed. That's how you do that. And that's super easy. And I think that's fantastic. And use it a lot. Use it a lot. Rotate mode if you want everything rotated. I mean, that's basic stuff. Zoom, um, you can use that a lot. Very handy. You can flip stuff around, change the D to a B. Why not? Up and down. Those are nice, quick edits. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Excellent. So there's quite a bit that you can do once you know that you can cut these pieces apart and make your awesome edits. So that's basic. The other thing that we use it for are how to view things. Now that's at the bottom left. You can view stitches, same thing. View 3D, I use that all the time. It gives you a really good idea of what your embroidery is going to look like. So if you missed this, I moved that, but say that's a flaw, you can clearly see that it's there when you look in 3D. You can see it in the other one too, but you know what I mean. It gives you a really good idea of what your embro final embroidery is going to look like. And I check when I'm digitizing, I check the 3D all the time. It's really handy and it's really easy to do. If you don't like all the shine on it, you just click on 3D mat, and I think that's super. Um, I like the shine. I don't know. I'm a shiny person, maybe. I just always go to the 3D, and I think it looks better. I think a really handy thing is the density map. And you can double check any changes that you've made, or if you're digitizing in studio and you've done something different, I always check it now. This one has a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red, but lettering always does. The lettering is always going to have yellow and red. Don't expect any embroidery design to be all green because I have yet to find one. It would be a very, you know, undense. So a little bit of red is okay. If, say, this letter E was all red, you need to fix that. That is going to be, you know, it's a warning sign, your red flag say that that's going to be way dense and there's a problem. Now, that happens a lot, and I'm, let's take our D here. Let's take our D, and we looked at it, and it looked pretty good. Let's make it way small. Yes, I know there's going to be errors. Thank you. Now let's go to our density map, and it's almost impossible to see, but see how red it is? It's all completely red. That tells you a problem. Now, the other thing you make it, this is what I was talking about resizing. You know, this is a good size. What if you take it this big? Now, oh, I know. I'm putting a lot of errors in. But you can see that is wrong, too. You can see, wow, I can see stitches. That's not very dense. That's terrible. And you know that's not going to stitch out properly. So it gives you a really nice, quick view of everything. So the other view down here that I enjoy is x-ray. And it's the same thing as the density map. It just looks a little different. And you can see on the x-ray, you can see there's an overlap on the R. There's another overlap. This is the um, joining stitch. <coughs> and these aren't bad. This is what it looks like. But you can see if you know something was overlapped. Obviously, that's not going to work. My poor D is going to be a mess by the time I'm done with it. But say you move stuff over and it's, you know, three or four. You're going to be able to see that on both of these. So I always just give it a quick check if I'm making any adjustments to any design and just make sure, look at our D now. This is why you can't adjust things too many times and this is why you can't make them too big or too small. Yes, I know. Thank you, Ember. Um, because what a mess that is. You can't do anything with that. That doesn't even look like a D. Look, this is all messy, Ugh, awful. So really, you can't do anything with it. Another thing I like to use a lot is the uh, sew simulator. And you can use it in studio and in editor. And what this is for is to show you 
exactly how, and it's exactly how, your machine is going to stitch out your design. And this is where you can do two things. You can, three things actually. You can see how it's stitched out and see, see how it's going to move. And you can change the speed. And I'm going to show you that just momentarily. You can, if you buy a design, sit and watch it a couple times. And you'll pick up a lot of details, a lot of, oh, so they made a connecting stitch to go over here instead of a jump stitch. But you can see if you're just learning and you're just beginning with Ember, you can see how digitizers stitch things out. And it's fascinating. And it's a lot easier than standing at your machine watching them. And you can, you'll be surprised that how much you'll pick up. And the other reason to use a sew sim, sew simulator is if you're making changes in editor, or you're changing lettering, and you're doing different things, um, you can pick up on mistakes if you um, made a wrong connection and you didn't pick up on it here. You can see when it's stitched out, or you can see, oh, I don't need underlay there, or oh, I need to fix that. So it's very handy, and I would suggest everyone use it. Even um, if it's not on your own designs, you can actually learn quite a bit, quite a bit, and it's very handy. So now that is in editor, we use the embroidery machine file. So that's a PES, that is a DST, we use some um, Husqvarna ones, all the ones that you can send to your machine. So saying that, we are going to go into Studio, which is where all of the digitizing takes place. And we're going to go over a few things. So here is where Studio lives, Studio Plugin. And we'll just give it a sec. And there it starts. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is change my background. And I'm changing that. It's under Hoop Color. And I'm changing that so you can see my mouse better. So I'm going to make it gray. So I clicked up here. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a lot of settings here. If you click on here, you can pick your hoop size. And they have a lot of them. And they are named properly and they give you the sizes. And here's one thing when you're doing it, it puts it in portrait. And if you want it landscape, you've got to find this right here and remember to click on it. So it changes it from portrait to landscape. That stumps a lot of people on that one. So I just want to point that out. That's how you change the hoop. There you go. So hoop color I showed you, hoop size. We have a couple of brother PR600, so we're going to use this size. Saving, this is where everybody needs auto save on. And it's going to auto save your design. So if something happens, not that Ember isn't perfect, but it does happen or your computer happens or you won't lose everything. And if you want to back up your files, it's going to save it under the name, the format, .bak, and you can bring them in again. So it's a good idea. Um, grid, you can set up your grid on the back. I don't have it. You can change the colors of different things if you want. Guidelines, I'll show you what they are. Um, they're very handy. They're very delightful. 3D preview, you can change what the background looks like. Kind of cool if you need it. And I check 3D all the time, so it's awesome. And highlight selected objects. If you don't like that, take it off. I leave it on. And then you've got to remember to click Apply. And there we go. So hopefully everyone can see my mouse really well. So Studio, this is where it all happens. And this is where people get stuck. Where do I start? And I should have answered the question at the beginning. Where do I start? You start by knowing your software. The digitizing, there's basic embroidery rules, you know, like density rules, don't have it, you know, too dense or it's not going to work. All the rest of the stuff is based, software based. So you can learn to digitize in Ember and you can pick up another program and it's all basically the same. You just need to figure out how to do it. So if you have digitizing experience but are new to Ember, you just need a couple classes or, or a couple pointers to tell you how to get around it, and then you can do it. So know your software. Play around with it. I suggest everyone go into Manager, have a look, push all the buttons, do whatever you can. Editor, the same thing. We, uh, Like I said, we have a great video, and I do spend a whole entire hour on Editor, believe it or not. And there's a lot you can do in Editor, but it's not digitizing. Here is where the creativity, it's my studio, it's my embroidery studio. And it looks a bit daunting. There's a lot going on. But if you look around, 
it's not that bad. Things are doubled up a bit. So down at the bottom, these are the same as what we had on editor. So if you know editor, you're going to be okay in studio because it's it's the same thing. You can see just the image, you can see the stitches, you can go into the 3D ones, you can view it at 1.1 size. There's your stitch simulator, it's not on the side, it's right there, awesome. Density map and x-ray. And I would suggest that people use these tabs a lot. They will help you out a lot when you're first starting out, especially the stitch simulator and the 3D. I use that all the time and I check the density once before I bring it into um, editor. So the first thing I'd like to explain about in studio, when you're digitizing, you use native files and they are EOF files. Now these are basically editing files, creative files I call them. They are not files that your machine will understand. It won't understand an EOF file. You have to bring, once you're done your EOF file, you have to bring it into editor and save it under PES. And that is what your machine will understand. So basically the EOF files are editing files. I don't want to confuse it with editor, but they're creative editing files. And one big difference is when you create a native EOF file, you can do, um, let's do the word Embird, okay, and then we generate the stitches, and there we go, but you don't have any limitations. It's going to adjust for everything. Now, that doesn't look like much, but you have to go up here and you have to generate the stitches to see it. Now, let's say I made that quite a bit bigger. Let's make it quite a bit smaller within reason, and there's no errors. There's no errors. So if you create native embroidery files that are EOF files, you can go back into Studio, pull them up, and you can edit them however you want. Now these ones are all separate, so I don't need to do the cutting out. And if you look here on the right, here's all the pieces of what I just did. So letter E, this is the connector, and you can click on it, and it's just going to highlight it. If you don't want connectors, you can take it out, but you have to put a trim in there. But it's workable. You can work on, you can change everything, you can do everything. So I would suggest for digitizing, even with lettering, bring everything into studio and do some native stuff. Now, that being said, understand if you bring a PES file into editor, it's not an EOF file. It's still a PES file and all the rules apply. You can't make it too big, you can't make it too small. So only, only, let me be perfectly clear, only items, objects created in Studio are EOF files and are completely, completely editable. So only files that you create in here. Not ones you bring in, but only files that you create. That confuses a whole bunch of people Trust me, this will save you a lot of frustration if you understand that, that it's, it has to be created in studio to be completely edit, uh, editable. If I brought the Embered Rocks into studio, I would still have the same problems. So just try to remember that. Save yourself a lot of frustration if you bring in a file and you do add some lettering and then you bring it back out to editor and send it to your machine and it's super dense because you, you know, change the size of it. That's why you have to do it again or do something different in studio to make it work. But this is where it's at. This is where you can do everything. So we went through the hoops. We went through um, lettering is right there. Now this is the embered lettering that you pay for. Again, I don't think you have to have them all, but it sure is nice lettering. I've never had a bad stitch out with it. We have maybe 10 of them that we use regularly, and we haven't bought the rest of them because we don't use them. Font Engine is the handiest thing. It can pull all of your TTF files off of your computer, and they usually work out pretty well. You have to be a little bit careful with them. Same rules apply as for editor. Some of them just really are not made for embroidery, and that is the end of that. 
a lot of them, when you go small, uh, generally you'll have a hard time because they're not made for it. They're not nicely set out properly in different layers. Um, bigger, you're, you're probably okay as long as you're not trying to make big satin stitches. So let's go down here on the left-hand side and figure out what we need to do to start here. Now we've done simple lettering. You can play around with the lettering. I'm going to show you here before we go down the side there. Highlight what you want and you right click and you have a whole bunch of options here. Now when I do lettering, I always group it. I just find it easier unless you're going to pull the letters apart if you want different colors because I forget and I want to move the whole thing so I grab it like that and if I didn't have it grouped, I only would have pulled the M. And then I go, wow, really? So then you have to go edit and undo to get it put in the exact same spot. So just as a habit, just one of those old dog new trick things, I group it. So right click, and there's a lot of things you can do here. And generate stitches, um, I'm in the habit of using this one up there. But that's OK. You can edit text. So say if you have this all done and you go, wow, OK, I made a mistake. You have to go into edit text and it'll bring it back to where you started from. So Embird, if I want to add to it, I just click it over and we're going to do Embird Rocks. So then you have it at the original size again. Awesome. See, so that's right click edit text. If you want a different size, I pulled everything out and you pulled the bounded box corners. Um, you can change the kerning here. If you click here, you can see I'll exaggerate it. It moves the words apart if you want more spacing, if you want the characters. So really click, quick to do it. Uh, more controls. This is how you change the size. Now I'm just left clicking on it. So you can really play around in here. You can change angles. You can. There's so much you can do. These are all basic things and you can play around with them. And when you're done, you go up to the left and you generate the stitches. Whoops. I just have to click it twice for no reason. But see how I've changed that? That was like three clicks to do it. Yay, not bad. I like it. So again, on this one, we have, we're going to start working down the left. I just wanted to show you those cool things and how to edit. I guess I could show you parameters, but I'll do that after. So you can edit points at it, and this makes it a little bit easier. Let's zoom in so you can see. Now you can see where everything's attached. You can add different things. You can move it around. Simple. I'm going to, because I made a mess. This is your zoom tool. Um, let's do the basic ones. So let's start with, you know, where do I start? Lettering. That's a great place to start. And you can do some playing around with it, change the colors, do some things. Let's start on actual um, digitizing, and I'm going to bring in a picture shortly, but I'm just going to show you, give you a quick rundown of the stitches. Now, this is a fill stitch, and I clicked on it, left click, and you place a point down, and then you keep placing your points. So the square ones are straight, and the circle ones are curves, and that's basically how you start digitizing. You place your stitches and you maneuver them around. And look how quickly I can change the shape. I can, I can do anything. Curved, straight, curved, straight. Awesome. There's a lot of controls over here on the right. Change the angles. We can go through those after. But just for a fill stitch, if you click on this down menu, there's a whole bunch of different fills. So you can change the whole thing. Two clicks, you need to generate. And generate, because I have to do it twice. There you go. Flip over to your 3D. Look at that. How many clicks was that? You're digitizing. I think it's awesome. Super easy. Um, another thing I just want to point out quickly when people want to do shapes. So if you're looking here and you see shape and it shows you they're all grayed out and people get really frustrated with this and it's kind of awkward how you have to do it, but it's not bad. So shape you can't do it from here. So we're going to do a filled shape, or down here is an outline shape. But we're on filled, so we're going to do fill. So you go up here, and then you go shape. It's still not open. You have to put down a point. So you put down your starting point. Then you go to ellipse. So click on it, and it was open. And I'm left clicking, and I'm dragging. And you go, OK, I've made my circle. 
there's no way of generating. It's all grayed out. What do I do? You have to right click and you have to put it two elements and then you get all your nodes and then all of this appears. So you still can change at any point if you want to make this into a funny looking flower or monster or something. Start with a circle, pull out the points. I guess it's kind of a square cloud or something. I don't know. But that's how you do that. And that is super easy to make perfect shapes. And it's going to fill it in. That's great. If you want to say I want to change some more things, go to right click, parameters, and then you can change. This is underlay down here. And you can change the angle. You have quite a bit control of that. Again, you can do the drop down. And you have all these pre-programmed stitches. So you can really get the look that you want. And you can, when you have the parameters open, it's actually really nice because you can sit and play. So make a shape, whatever shape you want. And all you have to do is click apply. Nothing closes. So you can pick another one and pick apply. And then you can pick another one. You, there's quite a few that you can do. And you don't have to keep exiting and, you know, you can try something different and you'll be surprised how many times you can use these um, fancy stitches. Now, if you're using the plain stitches, you're okay for any size. If you're using these carved stitches, I call them because these are carved out. You can see that's how it'll stitch out. It has to be a decent size. So if you make this really small, it's not going to look good. So if it looks kind of funny, you need to change it to a plain fill or you need to um, make it bigger. That's all. So don't get frustrated on that part. That's all it is. You can do auto column. Now this is too big for auto column, but I'm going to apply it anyways. If you see something like this, um, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just too big to make a satin stitch. It's not going to stitch it. Your machine would have a heart attack stitching back and forth this length. If you look down here, it's two by two. So we're asking the machine to stitch two, stitch here, and then go over two inches. And obviously that's not going to work. And Embroid is going to tell you that doesn't work, and this is what I'm going to give you. And you won't like it, so you're going to change it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so auto column, if you get this kind of mess, just make it smaller. That's all you have to do. You can do motif stitches, which I absolutely adore. They're great for quilting. And it's the same as the plain fill pull down menu. You can just click on it, go and check it out. I think it's absolutely awesome. Okay, we have, I'm running out of time. I, there's so much to say. Why don't we move on to, I want to make sure I leave time for questions. But I didn't quite get through all I want. But then again, I spent an hour on it before, I guess. Um, so fill stitches, the other one you need to know, the main one, are outline stitches. And it's the same thing. You plot it. You can bend around. But it's different over here on the right. Um, a sketch stitch is really cool. It is in between a run stitch and a satin stitch. So it's not as thick as a satin stitch, but not as thin. And it usually gives a nice effect if you need to outline something small. So don't be afraid to try the st sketch stitch on it. Sample stitch is what we have it on. And look, you can change everything. Whoops, you can change everything. And it's basically the same as the fill stitches, the fancy fills, except you don't quite have any limitations. So you can click on it. There you go. Satin stitches. Border stitches, super fun. They are amazing. They're a little bit more intricate than the sample stitches. And you can get really nice effects without doing a whole lot of digitizing. Um, for example, the rope one, that would be kind of hard to do. I'm just going to generate it with the click it twice. Look at that. Isn't that really nice? Right click, parameters, and now we can, I'm going to move this over so we have a central view. And now when you do parameters, you can have um, playtime. You can play around satin stitches. You can click apply. And that's what a satin stitch should look like. And remember, I'm in 3D. I tend to work a lot in 3D because I like it. You can do applique. You can do borders. You can play around with, with the sample stitches. There you go. And you can do different things. Once you generate, it's all going to close. And there you are with that. 
So those are the main things to get started. Where do I start? You start with a fill stitch or an outline stitch, or you can start with some lettering and play around in studio and get comfy with what you're doing and know when you need to be <coughs> excuse me, know when you need to be in studio or when you can do it in editor. But all good digitizing was created in studio. So let's do something really quickly because I want to give you a quick overview. Um, a lot of people stare at their blank screen and go, I don't know how to do anything. Okay, the best thing to do is start simple, absolutely simple. A beginner digitizer should not be starting on a logo, something fancy with writing and curved lettering and outlines and this and that. Not saying that you can't do it, but your frustration is going to go through the through the roof. And I'm always good about saying happy digitizing. Be happy with what you're doing. Start off small, get some really good stitch outs, and you're going to be so happy, and you're going to be inspired and enthusiastic and do a lot more. So start easy and move on. Once you man master one thing, make it a little more complicated. There's a lot of free, royalty-free images out there. Um, lots you can do. So let's have something to work with because I can't really work on a blank screen. I like something in the background to look at. So we're going to go up here to image and we're going to click on import. Now I have this right at handy on my desktop so I'm simply going to click on it and then I'm going to click open. Ugh. And I'm going to click open. Do you want to scale the image to fit in your current hoop? I just clicked yes because we are going to do some resizing. So one of the major, I was talking about rules and how to do stuff. One of the rules that you have to listen to is that you need to digitize at the size of your final design. So what that means is if you are planning on doing a 4x4 four four design, don't digitize it at the picture at you know 10 by 10 because you're going to do completely different things and when you shrink it down although I told you you can shrink it down and Ember will make the adjustments but if for example you put a nice handy um, if nice you know satin outline on it and that looks great at 10 by 10 because it will when you bring it down it's going to take up you know most of your wing here because it's going to be really thick and you have to thin it out and it'll just save you time so remember that as a rule you need to digitize at the size that your final design needs to be so how do you figure out the size because you know although I had to zoom in and out that looks fine and I'm looking around and I don't see anything you go back into image and you go to edit image window and that is going to give you all your information. Um, you can change the angle of it if you want, but you click on the second one here. Look at that. That is huge. So if I wanted to make that into a, a little 4x4 four four or 2x2 two two design, I, I'm going to make a mess of it with the detail work. It's, that has to do with the details, and you will save yourself frustration and agony if you digitize at the size that you want, because if you slap down you know, for example, a satin stitch, you will know if it works or not, and you don't have to make any changes. So let's bring that guy down a bit. I just clicked on the arrows. You can click here if you want to be a little more precise. Now we know our size. So it's five and a half by three and a half, basically. You don't have to be right on. You know, it's close enough. That's good. So it's going to adjust it. Then we're just going to zoom in again. And this is not the greatest picture, but we can work with it. We're not going to do the shadows, so we're going to concentrate on the black part. So what do you do for here? Well, we want to fill this guy up with stitches. So not outline, because we want, although you could do a nice outline, I guess. We want to do fill stitches, and that's right here. So click on that, and now you can start plotting your points. So you left click, and then you bend. Now see how well you can do that? You don't need to put a whole bunch of points like this. That's not how to do it properly. Stretch it out a little bit. The less nodes you put on, the better. Sometimes there's a need for a lot of nodes, but that's not going to look the greatest. This is going to be the differences. This is going to be a beautiful curve. And this will curve, but it's not going to be perfect. So stretch it out. And sometimes if you can't get the right bend, you have to move it back a little bit. 
but I'm just clicking and bending, I call it, clicking and bending. And you don't have to be exact. I'm always a big one for saying, let's think outside the box. And just because you have a nice backdrop doesn't mean you have to do it exactly that way. You can if you want, but if you are working and you're thinking of something, you know, oh, this would look really good like this. I'm going to make it a bit longer. Or, you know, if I'm looking at this and I say, I think this part could be longer, do it. Just absolutely do it. And try. You can always go back and edit your nodes and fix it. Now, I'm just doing this really quickly just to show you guys. And I'm just left-clicking. And I call this plotting. There's probably a better word for it, but that's how I do it. I plot out the whole design in my mind, and then I do it. And that's how it, that's how you do it. And you start with, usually you start with what's on the first layer, because it's, um, this one won't be, but most designs are in layers. So you start with the bottom layer and work from there. So look, here we go. That didn't take lot, that long, and we have a bat. Now, a lot of people get stuck when you're at the end here, because if you try clicking close, it won't work. What I do is left click and hold and I slide it on there. There's a shortcut, there's another shortcut you can do, fin I right clicked and you can do finish object and I'm sure there is a um, keyboard shortcut for it. Oops, I did one too many. Go back here to the undo, easily done. Now we can generate and look at that, we have a bat. Isn't he cool? Let's go to 3D and check out the bat and there's a bat. I think that's too round there. I would go in and fix that, but that's okay. The only problem is we don't have the eyes yet for the bat. Oh, let's change the color. Why don't we? I don't want to make them black. Let's do a red bat. So these are your colors up here, and all you do is left click, hold, and when you get over what you want to do, you let go and it turns color. It's that easy. And there's lots of colors to choose from. You can change them later if you need to. You can pick colors out if you need to. I tend to stick to the basics, but do it however you know suits you. Uh, we're just used to it. So we want some eyes. Two ways of doing the eyes. Um, he's kind of small, so he's not he's five by three. He's not too bad. You can either cut out the eyes, or you can put satin stitch eyes on top, or fill stitch eyes on top. So let's do both. Let's cut them out because I think cutting out is very important. If it's really small, don't cut it out. You don't need to. It's going to um, make a lot more stitching for you. So what you have to do, and it's kind of hard to see the way I have it, you have to select the item that you're working on. It has to be selected. And you remember this was our fill stitch. Look at the, the icon over to the left. This is your hole cutting one. And it's the same icon as that, but with a hole in it. And that's how you remember it, just at a glance, how you cut out a hole. So you're going to click on that, and then you plot your stitches. And it's just the same as what we were doing. And there you go, and I slide it up and adjust it a little bit better. You can fix the color, you can do everything, or just generate. And there it is. Look at that. You have a hole cut. Now... At this point, I haven't done anything else. I generated. I haven't done anything else. If this is in the wrong spot, you can move it. And don't get confused. All my stitches disappeared. They're still there. They're just not generated. So at this point, we can move it. I don't want to move it because I really like it. Once you click off, now it's set. Now, if you try to move it now, you will move the whole thing, and we don't want to do that. So if you want to see your stitches, click on it do generate, and you can see when we go into 3D, you have a hole cut. And I think that's awesome. I think that's amazing. That it, and it's so easy to do. And if you start off with something simple, great. Let's flip back to the normal. Let's do this one on top. So what would you do? You'd go to a fill stitch, and we're going to do it here. And we're just plotting it out, and I'm going to slide to the beginning one. If you look here, let me zoom in and see if you can see. Oh, I guess it doesn't make too much of a difference. See the first stitch you, you plot down has all these lines. That's how you can tell it's your beginning. And that's where you go back to to have it closed. Or you can do finish object, and it'll do it for you automatically. But there you go. Now we have it over on the right. We have another object. So let's left-click, 
slide down and change the color. Uh, we need to make a change for that because if you're looking at it right now, you can see the red through because we have the red and the yellow stitching the same way and they're going to blend in a little bit and that's not the effect that we want. Let's look at it in 3D. It doesn't show it in 3D, but that's it's kind of telling you that. So let's go right click our favorite parameters. I'll bring it down here so you can see. And right here, let's change the angle of it. So it stitches out at a completely different angle and it make it look better. We can also, why don't we try changing it to auto column. So I just clicked on auto column, apply. It's pretty small. I think that will work just fine. Now you still see some of the red stitches, but it looks differently. Let's look at it on 3D. Yeah, there you go, auto column. Easy as pie. Now, I want this other one filled. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. So I have it selected. Again, I can make my hoop bigger so you can see it, but the bounding box has to be there. Um, you can't work on anything if it's not that way. So click on activate what you're working on. And here's my two favorite things, transform and convert. This is what awesomeness is in digitizing. Transform, if you click on it, there's so much you can do. The flipping, the shrinking, the envelopes, the shape. For this one, though, we want convert. And don't get confused in this. It seems, I guess the way they've named it confuses a lot of people. But you need to think about what you're doing. What is it I want? I want this hole filled with stitches. That's what I want. So the easiest way is go down and read them. So create outline from fill. That's not what we want. Create column from fill. No, we don't want a column stitch. We want to create fill from opening. So click on that, and right there, it's filled. It's done. Two clicks. You don't have to re-digitize the hole again. You just click, and there it is. Now it's showing up red, and it didn't generate. So let's make it yellow so it can match what we're doing, and let's generate it. Awesome. See how good that looks? Let's look in 3D. There you go. There's a little bit of a gap there, but it's small enough it's not going to show. Not everything you see in 3D is, uh, you know, effective in when you stitch it out. So look at that. So two different kinds of stitches. We digitized a whole bat. Why don't we just quickly, and I'm going to show you this, if you want an outline on it, and this is really important to do, and it's so easy. A lot of people think they have to go ahead and digitize the whole thing again, or they click on it, they duplicate it, they match it up, and then they change it to column stitch. That is a way of doing it. That'll work, and it'll be the same. I wouldn't suggest you know, digitizing the whole thing again because you're not going to be able to make your curves perfect. Um, click on it, highlight it. I'm going to show you the shortcut to get the job done. Convert, create outline from fill. Control, Alt, and O. Click on that. And just like that, you have an outline. It's hard to see because it's the same color, but let's make it black. And voila, let's go into 3D. Look at you have an outline. Awesome. Let's make the outline better. Let's not wait. It did the eye because remember we cut that out because that is considered a line. So these two would be different, which is kind of weird. But we're just going to ignore that. So let's click on. Now you got to make sure. Now it looks the bounding box looks exactly the same when I click on the bat and when I click on the outline. So look over to the right and make sure you are on the right thing. And then we're going to right click on that and we're going to go to parameters. And I'm going to show you this sketch. Let's apply. And wow, can you see it? Maybe we'll do it in 3D. Generate. If you wanted satin stitches, do that. So once you get it put down, then you can change it around. And that's when you can put a border on. I don't think the bat would look so good with the border. Let's do the sketch, apply, generate. So that's only a few clicks to come up with our bat. And we did outlining. We cut out a hole. We played around with satin stitches. We played around with a whole bunch of stitches. Now look at that. If you zoom in, now that's that sketch stitch I was talking about. It's not as thick as a satin stitch um, and not as thin as a running stitch. And I think it looks great. I personally just love it. There's the running stitch inside the eye. So this is quite a bit thicker, but it's not nearly as dense. So there you go. That is, I think that's absolutely awesome. 
really super easy to do, um, and that is your introduction to digitizing with Ember. And I would encourage everybody to right click on parameters. It just makes it easy and you can move it down. I'm just holding it and play around with the different stitches. You could even play around. It won't look good, but you never know what you come up with. That's kind of weird looking, but how awesome is that? Play around with your stitches. Figure out, um, I try to tell everyone, that one doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like a bit feathery. I guess it's a bit wonky on his head. But um, you'll be surprised what details you can add with already programmed stitches. And you can change the entire look of the whole thing. Actually, stars, that's kind of cool. Not really, but it's kind of cool. It fits in at least, right? Needles. And you can just keep clicking away and click apply. And you'll be surprised what you'll find. I encourage everybody to play. So that's my key to it. That's where do I start? Play around. Do something simple. Play around. Play with different things. Play with the simple effects. Now we went through quite a few, and I know it's a lot to take in because um, you know we basically went through the whole program in kind of a hurry. But that's how you get started. You start with something simple. You play around. You get really comfy with the program. And then you move it along and you do something a little more complicated and a little more complicated and stitch all these out. And um, yeah, by the way, check out the stitch simulator and everything. The density, let's look at the density. Not bad. See, that's absolutely fine. And the x-ray before you do it. Now, one more thing before we go to questions. This, you save it. So design, save. And this will be saved as an EOF file. So let's do that really quickly so I can show you. So let's save it. I'm going to save it onto my desktop, and I'm going to call it Cool Bat. And it has to be an EOF file so we can go back in. Now, that EOF file, I know it's saved on your computer. Your machine will not understand it. So to finish what you were doing, you have to click here and it says compile and put into Ember Studio. That's when it gets put into a machine format. So bye bye studio for now. And pick I'm gonna pick PS and DST because that's where our machines are. Center and hoop. Uh, save it. Save it. Yes. That's just asking me if I want to save it under the same name. Yes. And then it asks about the hoop. And now let's okay, well think about it. Come on. Let's get rid of this guy because I forgot to clear my space before I went in. And there you go, change the hoop to match. Now this is what you can send. You now have it saved as a PES and a DST file. And that is what you can send to your machine and have a wonderful stitch out. The density is great. The um, outline is great. Everything's in the right order and it'll look fantastic. Have yourself a few good stitch outs and then move along to something more difficult. So, okay, that is today's lesson. Can you show, can you show the sew simulator now? Oh, back in the studio, Don, or now? I didn't see it. Sorry, I was so enthusiastic about my digitizing. Okay, so let's go back into studio. Um, I highly recommend, I can go into studio right now, but when I come back in, there's going to be another bat if I save over. So, and it gets a little bit confusing. I don't actually like it. I make sure I clear out my editor before I go back in. So let's click on here. It's right up here. Launch studio plugin. Let's go. It just takes a second to come up. and we're going to bring up the bat again. So now we're in studio. Yay, we're in bat. So open recent and look at this cool bat.eof. Exactly what we were working on. Exactly. And that's why you need the EOF files. You can make it bigger or smaller because we did everything natively. Now I didn't grab that properly. So let's do edit undo. Edit undo because we don't want shadowy bat. So let's select everything. And I'm just left clicking to do it. I have to move this so I can see. And you can see right here on the right that everything is selected. Now I can't see my bounding box, so I just moved it over a little bit 
so I can catch the corner, and that's going to look perfect. If you don't want the image there, let's get rid of the image, so it's delete image. And now we can see the bat. It doesn't look so good, so let's generate the stitches. And you can see what I mean about the, um, the uh, satin stitches. Those are almost a little bit too thick. What happens if we make them smaller? Remember I was saying about the sizing? Did I do it again? Yeah, I did. Wow. Wow me. Let's select all of it. Check. I have it all selected. Now let's make it smaller. So this is about detail work. The bat looks fine like that, but let's do it. See what happens. You can't do that satin stitch. That's when you would put in a running stitch, right? So that's why you need to digitize at the size that you're going to stitch out on, and that's why it's important. So Stitch Simulator, someone was asking a question. Sorry, I missed it before I escaped out. Um, is down here at the bottom left-hand side, and it's just a tab, and you just click on it. <coughs> and this is all the underlay it's doing. Now, this here is the speed, so you can make it much faster. You can make it way fast. Our machine stitch at about 1,300. Um, but you want to watch it, so I'm going to slow it down. And it's going to go up here on the top. It's telling you your commands, and it's showing you your colors. And before you bring your design into Editor, watch it stitch out. And then you can pick up on any mistakes that you have. See, it left the hole there and filled it in. It's going a little fast. Let's do it. And there's an outline for the satin stitches. But I would advise everybody to um, check it out on the simulator before you sew it out on your machine. And I think it saves a lot of trouble. I think it'll show you mistakes. Um, there's not many mistakes I can make on this guy. But if there was some joining mistake or something, that's when you can see it. And it'll save you you know, stitching it out, the thread, the time, and everything, if you can pick out the mistakes here. And if you have to watch it a couple times, that's fine. <coughs> Whatever works. So that's the stitch simulator. You can view it in 3D or the 3D mat if you don't like all the shininess. I kind of think it looks cool. And when it's done, it just flips you back. So there you go. Let me check. Any other questions there, Don? Don, Don? Um, show us your homework. Everyone should have the bat to work on. Get in there in studio, bring in your image, play around with it, and see what you guys can come up with. Think outside the box. Just because the, the bat is that shape doesn't mean you have to do it exactly like that. Um, and let us know if you have any questions. All right, are we ready to call it, Don? Yeah, I think so. I don't. I think so. I don't see anything else here. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending our class. There are quite a few classes. We we book them. It's generally once a week, and we step it up a little bit. Um, don't be afraid of any beginners class or even intermediate class. I don't think anyone will get confused. You'll just learn new things. So keep it going. Join our Facebook group. We talk a lot about the classes. That's a great place to post questions if you don't want to in class. The Facebook group is called Embered Happy Digitizing. And uh, we have, I don't know how many people we have, but it's mostly people who have gone to the classes and have a whole bunch of questions. And we're there to answer them for you. So Embered Happy Digitizing on Facebook. We have quite a few quick tip videos free on YouTube. Um, you can look for those. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Happy digitizing, and keep calm and digitize on. Thanks, everyone.